Good morning and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church here in Utah, Tennessee. If you have not already and are joining us virtually, please go to sfaec.org and download our full text bulletin. You will find in it not only all the prayers, but all the scripture readings and all the music for today. We begin on page three. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed 
where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I, live, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people who I'm formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 126, which we will read in unison. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, when, like those who dream, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. May your word live in us. Praise be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with them. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii? and the money given to the poor. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Blessed be God's holy name. Bless the one who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. They're back to their usual roles. Here we are gathered in the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. And we have Martha serving. She's always busy, isn't she? Making sure that everything's tended to, as a good host does. And Lazarus, now risen from the dead, probably with a hint of embalming spices still around him, is sitting quietly at table. For all the times we hear about Lazarus, we never hear him utter one word. And then there's Mary. Mary who seems to have embraced exactly what St. Francis used to tell us, preach the gospel at all times and only when necessary use words. Wordlessly, she comes out with this box of expensive ointment, breaks it open, and pours it on Jesus' feet. Now, some of you may wonder why his feet. Well, for one, part of hospitality in that day and age was when you came to wherever you were going, you washed your feet, just like we freshen up when we've made a journey. You washed your feet because your feet are what transported you there. But this time she's using an ointment called nard. And nard has a particular scent. And some of you may have smelled it if you've been anointed with this holy oil from the Holy Land. And as she breaks it open, she pours it on his feet, a sign of anointing for death. Had she poured it on his head, that would have been a sign of anointing for kingship. But here it's on his feet. And he acknowledges it, doesn't he? He says why she's doing it. She saved this for me to anoint me for my death. One of the commentators I read this week raised something I'd never thought about before. Lazarus is sitting there at the table, and this is pretty close to when he's come out of the tomb, wrapped up in funeral clothes, and Jesus told him, unbind him, let him go. And they were having a celebratory feast now. Because he was raised from the dead. That expensive perfume 
was not used on him. His sister did not use it on him. She saved it for Jesus. And I find that a remarkable realization. Well, the scent of oil fills the house. And those who have had this know, even just with a few drops on the person's thumb to anoint, the smell stays with you for hours. So imagine what a pound was like and how that scent would have stayed with Jesus, pervaded his journey to Jerusalem, his journey to what he knew would be his death. What an amazingly comforting scent to have with him as he takes this journey. And she seems fully aware of what is ahead, even when nobody else gets it, because she's busy anointing him for that journey. It took a particular courage for both of them. Courage in Jesus to unflinchingly look ahead and then unblinkingly walk that road to Jerusalem. Bethany's up a hill, you go down the hill, and you're in Jerusalem. Walking what he knew would be to his death. And for Mary, it took amazing courage to take an action prior to death saying he's going to die with an expensive perfume that got just as she suspected I would think criticism why are you doing this and interestingly there are always critics around to question what actions one takes in love But she did it anyway. Brene Brown asserts that courage and fear are not mutually exclusive. Most of us feel brave and afraid at the exact same time. And had you been here at that little hour in between eight and 10, you would have heard quite a discussion among some of us who talk about our anxieties in doing what we do and how we find the courage to do it. And sometimes it is an unflinching look at duty that helps carry us through. But most times in my life, I found it is God's courage that I draw on when my courage is failing. Harper Lee wrote in To Kill a Mockingbird that story about widower Atticus Finch raising his young son and daughter amid racism and classism in a depression era Alabama about a scene that I'd forgotten and read again this week. Jim, his son, and Scout his daughter faced the taunting of the neighbors and school peers because Atticus has agreed to defend a black man. Mrs. DeBose, an elderly neighbor, adds her insults to them. She sits on her front porch and torments the children with comments as they walk home from school every day. Finally, one day, Jim, in his frustration, takes out his revenge by grabbing a baton and beating up her prized camellia bushes. And so Atticus punishes the children by having them go to her home and read aloud to her two hours every afternoon for a month. Scout remembers in the story, quote, an oppressive odor met us 
when we cross the threshold. An odor I had met many times in rain-rotted gray houses. It always made me afraid, expectant, watchful. And so each afternoon they read while Mrs. DeBose slept and drooled until an alarm clock rang and the children could run outside and escape to fresh air. Finally, the month was up, and not long afterward, Mrs. DeBose dies. The children are surprised, but Atticus tells them that she was addicted to morphine and that their reading sessions helped her to wean herself so she could die in freedom. He says, and I quote, I wanted you to see what real courage is. It's when you know you're licked before you begin, but you begin anyway, and you see it through no matter what. You rarely win, but sometimes you do. What courage it takes for Jesus to keep going to Jerusalem. What courage it takes for Mary to be with him on that journey in the sign of the anointing, in the sign of her unbounded love for him and his ministry. And what courage will it take for us to this year embrace that journey with Jesus, to do the difficult things, to reach out unsuspectingly to others who might need care or concern. There's an unattributed response written to this gospel story, though I would say from the use of a word in it, one would think it was of British descent. Blokes need fragrance too. The scent of flower or leaf or the feel of tears on cheeks and rifts of joy or grief. Blokes too need lovely things with color, shape, or song and flutes that knit the threads when the dark nights are long. Blokes need the feel of touch, the love of soft fingers, like Christ readied for death with scent that still lingers. We committed years ago to one symbol of caring for those we might not know, but know God knows, in our annual collection of Walk in Love. This year has been a little thin, and I'm asking us to pray again about what it means to take a message of death because that's what led to this story, the death of Michael Robbins. And this congregation responded with a resurrection story of shoes and foot care and socks for those who need them. Whether it's contributing to walk in love, whether it's your interactions through the weeks ahead, let us remember that all of us are on some journey, and in our own minds it might be one to a cross. And it is upon us to be like Mary and reach out in care and concern in surprising, unpredictable acts of love. Beloved of Christ, 
Let us embrace those acts of love and let us walk with Christ on this journey. Stand. Let us say together the Nicene Creed found on page 11. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Michael, the presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop, for St. Luke's Knoxville of the Diocese of East Tennessee, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, all serving in the military, and those communities affected by war. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Lord, my I ask your 
prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. Lord, hear my prayer. I ask your prayers for the departed, including those killed in recent storms and those killed from the war in Ukraine. Pray for those who have died. your prayers for those on our long-term prayer list as well as our short-term prayer list including Linda Bonner and family, Mary Burgett, Eugene Jabanyuk, Sheila Crane, John Cruteau, Tom Daughtery, the Dowley family, John Duban, the Fowler family, Nicolette Gershman, Dee Harnett, Bill Harris, Diane Honeycutt, Hazel Honeycutt, Owen Hughes, Serhi Korolyuk, the Loy family, John McCulloch, the Camp Mickle family, Gary and Carol Morton, Mike Nobles, Serhi Onishenko, Gail Reed, the Shu family, Jerry Sniff, Pat Solfest, Linda Spears, Tom Stusi, Vitaly Vorontinsev, David Watson, the Charlie Young family, Bob, Jan, Julia, Karen and family, Zed, the people of Ukraine and Russia, those impacted by recent weather and the pandemic. Lord, hear my I ask your thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week, including Carol Morton and Ann Harmon, those celebrating anniversaries, those on our parish family prayer cycle, Ken Scott and Dina Roth, Maureen Scott, and Perry and Sue Scruggs, and for Metropolitan Ministries. Lord, hear my Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve, pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So the advantage of being the second service of the day is the mistakes I make in the first service I get called on, and I'm not going to do it again thanks to our uh, deacon reminding me. It's birthday Sunday, birthday and anniversary Sunday. So all of you who have April birthdays or anniversaries, or if you want to stand in for a family member, please come on down. I gotta get down on your all's level for this. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. A quick reminder, we will have a couple ways you can take communion today. We continue to have the mini chalices for those who like the communion contained with the bread and wine in that little chalice. And Josh will have that tray. And I will have wafers and a cup of wine for intinction of the wafer. And if you want your uh, wafer intincted, I will help you do that. But as we get ready for Holy Eucharist, hear again what Isaiah tells us God says to us. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it?
hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Regarding his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For the people of God. Josh, the body of Christ. The
mindful of the balm in Gilead that heals us. Let us stand together and pray the post-communion prayer on page 21. Eternal accepted us as living members and you have fed us with spiritual food, the sacrament of his body and blood. Come to the world in peace and have our Easter celebration. Follow tonight down in the parish hall and then at 10 we'll have our standard Easter Sunday morning followed by an Easter egg hunt. So to help us get ready for the Easter egg hunt, if you could drop off a bag of candy, a page of stickers, any little trinkets that are individually wrapped that we can put in those plastic eggs, we have a plethora of eggs. We don't need any more eggs, but we would welcome things to put in the eggs. And the youth next Sunday, Palm Sunday, will stuff those eggs after the 10 o'clock service. And then during the first part of the 10 o'clock Easter morning service, be out hiding the eggs for the children to go search for them for our annual Easter egg hunt. So a lot of things are back that are familiar. Also sign up for lilies to decorate this space. Uh, if you'd like to give one in memory of, in honor of, in Thanksgiving for, please note that they are $10 each. Uh, today, after this service, we'll have one more service at five o'clock and that will end our rotation of five o'clock services probably until after summer's over but we will have one more five o'clock with harp music at six, one more simple soup supper down in the parish hall, and we'll finish up talking about God's call and our response. And we welcome anybody, whether you've been there before or not, you can jump right into these conversations and we'd love to have you. Now, one of the great joys this congregation has on an regular basis is the gift of seminarians. As you know, Sue Southern is our current seminarian, and next semester she will be joined by seminarian Shelley Martin, who is here from the Diocese of Georgia, and we are delighted you are with us, Shelley. So please take time to introduce yourself to Shelley and help her get to know us better. And it is time for a Lenten blessing. May God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard you, save you, bring you safely to that heavenly country where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, and please note it's the last three verses of the hymn we are singing, four, five, and six.
the name of Christ.